Hey guys, Toucan Sam here. Today's video is going to be very different to one that I've ever done before. I'm going to be reviewing Battlefield 2042. I'm going to be giving my opinions on the game and where I think the game needs to go to be fixed or I guess to be put into a better place. So this is a very opinionative uh, video. So if you have any feedback whatsoever in the comments or anything, please let me know and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Just a little bit of background information here. My name is Peter and I'm 24 years old. I've been pretty much playing games all my life and this doesn't mean that my opinions are more valid or hold more merit, but I, I do believe I have some pretty good insights on where I think the direction of 2042 and where it could go to make the game better for everyone. So I'll now begin by doing like sort of like I guess subjects, like dot points of the most important things that I believe need to be fixed or addressed in any game. And then as I go on, I'll be explaining them in detail without trying my best to not drone on ridiculously. So let's get right into it. Probably the most important thing in any game, in my opinion, I believe this takes priority over every single thing. And that is performance. Now, performance doesn't necessarily mean FPS. This can also mean bugs, game crashes, hit reg, you name it, everything. And to me, performance is basically the building blocks of any game. If you don't have performance, you basically can't run the game. It's the whole foundation. Like, a bit of an extreme example. Um, you say you have a car, and you say there's two cars. One of them is quite an ugly car, and one of them is a fancy, amazing sports car, Lamborghini, whatever it is. The Lamborghini has a problem where every two or three minutes, the car engine stops working. So, like, you can drive the car and everything, and it looks pretty, and it looks nice, but it continuously has problems, endless problems. While the not-so-good-looking car runs flawlessly, the engine works great, and you never have an issue ever. What choice would you want? I guess you kind of wouldn't want both, wouldn't you? you? You wouldn't want a crappy car, but you wouldn't want a car that doesn't work either. You want both. So, I feel like a balance between the game's visual and its performance is crucial. And if there's no performance, there's just, th there's just no game. So, I don't really know what DICE were doing in the sense that and don't get me wrong, I understand that the performance between console and PC are very different. But like I said, performance is not purely about the FPS for me. It's about everything. The crashing, the connection, every single thing. And I'm not too sure in the development... Like, I'm not a game developer. I'm not sure in the development of how they actually planned and set this out through as they were patching and making the game. But I feel as if every change, everything that had been done should have been checked with the performance. Like, any change, how does this change affect the FPS? Does this add new bugs? Does this change the connectivity between servers? Everything, every single thing should have been taken into account whilst making the game. And I hope this isn't true, but it, it kind of felt like, I guess, in some games, that they let the players sort of be the guinea pigs. They let them be the ones that test the performance of the game when we're paying to play it, not to test it. Now, I know this is, might be a bit of an extreme sort of example here, but I hope this isn't true. I hope this isn't the case, but it definitely feels like it. And out of everything, I'm talking skins, content, every single thing, this should be the number one priority over every single thing in the game. Performance. This, this, this is crucial. Without performance, you can't have a foundation to a game. This is everything that matters. So the next thing I want to talk about now is balance. So to me, balance is a subcategory of three things. It is player types, teamwork, and reward factor versus the impact. So I'll explain what all these mean, and I'll go through each one of them and try to not obviously go into ridiculous extreme detail about each of them to save time. But these, I believe, are the most crucial factors to make a balanced and rewarding game for everyone. So to begin on with player types, I've listed them as three different examples. So I've listed them as casual, pro, and competitive. Now, these are not, like, this is not how everyone plays. This is just an example that I'm giving to make it sort of easier to explain. But everyone plays the game differently, and everyone has the right to play the game however they want, and no one deserves to be insulted or judged by how anyone chooses to play the game, as long as it's not obviously ruining the game for other people by, like, you know, cheating or hacking or breaking any rules or TOS, you know, you know what I mean. A casual player could play the game very competitively, a competitive player could play the game more in a fun, silly way, a professional player could be more mucking around, 
these are not hard set rules. They're just examples that I'm giving. But honestly, I'm interested to hear your guys' feedback on these examples that I'm giving and what you think about them. All right, so now starting with teamwork. Most FPS games nowadays are very tight around teamwork. Usually the main game mode consists of two teams and the team that does better is the winner. Like that's pretty much how most games are now. So, you know, you've got like Overwatch, CSGO, and even Battlefield. Whoever, whatever team performs better is the winning team. Now, to me, teamwork is not just about the numbers. What I mean by that is, if it's a one-on-one -on -one scenario, your, the impact of the game is greatly based on what you do, because it's just you on the team. If it's a 2v2, you could argue that it's a 50% impact that you have, because the other person has the other 50, but it's not necessarily the case, because there's a lot of other variables. It depends on the skill of the individual player, and how the game is designed around each individual player, the impact that the game allows you to have as an individual player. A really good example of this is a game like Overwatch. In this game, you got ranking going from bronze to grandmaster. If you place a grandmaster in a bronze game, because of his knowledge of the game and his skill, he will have a very big significant impact to the game. Now, this is still a team game, it still matters as you work as a team, but his individual skill and his individual knowledge gives him a greater impact over the result of the game. But as soon as you put him into a game full of other Grandmasters, his impact becomes a lot less significant because there are a lot more people that are familiar with the game and familiar with the teamwork concept. So that's a really good example to put on it. Like even with CSGO, it goes into more competitive aspects of the game. Basically, the higher the skill ceiling goes, the more team dependent it becomes and it becomes less individual. And this now moves on to the final subcategory of balance, and that is reward versus impact. I'll use a boss, a, a boss battle example. So say you have to verse a very easy boss. This boss takes you probably less than three minutes to beat. It's relatively easy, not too complicated. You get rewarded very little for it. Okay. Now you're versing a much more difficult boss. This boss is, takes, who knows, 30 minutes plus to beat. It requires a significant amount of planning, a significant amount of work, and you are heavily rewarded for beating him. You get the best gear, the best items, XP, whatever it is, right? So, how does this tie in well with the whole balancing system? I believe putting more work into something that you do should be more rewarded and have more of an impact to the game. If you make a game too easy, it loses its whole reward value, it loses its drive, its purpose. If you make it too hard, it makes it too unappealing to people who just want to play the game casually, people that don't want to put thousands of hours of work into it. So how do you make a perfectly balanced game with this concept? Well, it's a very simple thing. Make the game easy to learn and hard to master. Well, <laughs> it may be very simple to say, but it might not be so easy to utilize. Skill should be rewarded, but you shouldn't have to put thousands of hours into something just to have fun at it either. Well, I personally believe that the best way to balance this game would be a combination of all those three things in perfect equilibrium. So, having player types work well with teamwork, and having that with a good reward and impact, I reckon if all these three things are looked into and improved upon, this will make the balance of the game much more enjoyable for everybody. This is this this is a lot easier said than done though. Like I understand that like Battlefield 2042 is a lot more of a complicated game than others. There's a lot more players to take into account for, there's a lot more variables, while a game like ping pong is pretty straightforward. You know, so I'm not saying it's easy, but I believe even just small changes towards this would make such a big impact to the balance and the overall feel of the game. The next thing I want to talk about now is customization and reinvention. In Battlefield 2042 specifically, I felt like they've left out a lot of customization features. Considering, comparing it to 4, there's a lot of things that have been left out, and I think customization is great. I think it adds individuality between the players and more variety. I think it's one of the best things you could put in any game. It doesn't have to affect, like, as an example, the HUD, or the colors, or the reticles, everything like that, it doesn't affect the immersion of the game, like it doesn't affect other players, while skins that, that you, people can see globally is obviously very different. But if you could, for example, turn off skins from your point of view, just the more customization you have, I just reckon it's better. I, I think it adds more life to the game, it adds more to, the, to people who play the game, it makes it more enjoyable in every way. 
And to me, the reinvention part of all this means in Battlefield 4, I could change my squad, I could create a squad, I could lock a squad, and I could, you know, just simple things like that that you cannot do in 2042. In 2042, all you can do is change a squad. You can't lock a squad, pick a squad. The point that I'm making is, I believe change is good, and I believe doing new things are great. But to a certain degree, I believe it's viable. As, as an example, with Battlefield 4, there are so many things that worked so well in the game. And if they want to do something different with 2042, that's great. I, I think something new and different is good. But why take away so many good things? Leave, the, leave some good stuff. Leave, leave some things that worked, that the community really appreciated, and add on it. Use what worked and make it better. Don't change the whole wheel. Don't reinvent the whole wheel. Modify it. Make it something better than what it was. Instead of... I felt like they made Battlefield 4. They should have used Battlefield 4 as a preset. And, and Battlefield 4 plus 2042 equals something amazing. But instead, they like ditched the previous titles that worked really well. And ditched the ideas that worked really well. And came up with new ones that were completely different, which is a very big gamble. Now, I do agree that change is good, and that them doing something new and different isn't such an awful idea. But, like I said, to a degree, there's only so much that you can change where you're taking away so many good things that worked, it gives its whole new it gives the title a whole new image that people are not really liking anymore. So, just... What's a good way I can put this? Do add new things. Like, if you've got something so well polished and so well done, add to it. Don't change it fully. Change it to a degree, but don't. But keep the things that worked. Keep the good stuff. Why take away something like, as an example, something as simple as, like I said, as the squads? Why take that away if this new game has the exact same thing? Why is that gone? Why was that not? They should have basically used Battlefield 4 as a full preset, or Battlefield 3, or things that worked as an example and make this better. They should have looked at their masterpiece and thought, okay, how are we going to make the next one even better from here on out? That's something that I feel like needs to be toned down a little bit. Reinvention is good, but to a certain degree, not changing the whole game entirely, not changing the whole feel entirely. Changing it to a certain degree is great, but changing it too much will backfire on you. Well, for me, that basically sums it up, guys. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about the video. I hope that um, you guys enjoyed it, and you may or may not have agreed with a lot of the things that I said, but I would love to hear your opinion on it. I want to hear what you guys think about the game, and if these ideas were good directions or not. If you're interested in the content, be sure to give a thumbs up, and if you are interested, I do stream pretty frequently throughout the week on 2042 at the moment. I'm also getting into the helicopter and infantry aspects of gameplay, but... Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you all have a great day.